2022 and 2023 have been landmark years for discovering new, fascinating worlds. Last year, NASA surpassed 5,000 confirmed exoplanets. The list is incredibly diverse. It includes rocky super-Earths, gas giants like Jupiter, ice giants like Neptune, and so on. And this is just the beginning. There might be more than a trillion exoplanets in our galaxy alone. But the most important question is, how many of them are habitable, you know, for us? Are there any planets on this list that could have life on them? Or that could be a future home for us? Of course there are. And in 2022-2023, we found as many as five of them. So buckle up and hang on for a wild ride beyond our solar system. The first planet on our list is Wolf 1069b, a boring and stodgy designation. So I'll simply nickname it Wolfie, because hey, who's gonna stop me, NASA? <laughs> a new study conducted by 50 starry-eyed astronomers confirmed something awesome. This exoplanet, Wolfie, which is located just 31 light-years away from us, could potentially be a rocky world. In other words, theoretically, it's a habitable planet. The team behind this discovery used a technique called radial velocity to detect the exoplanet. This is a way scientists study the movements of stars and planets. It's as if when you're playing catch with a friend, as they throw the ball to you, you can see it coming closer and closer. It's kind of like radial velocity. When a planet is moving towards us, it makes the star it orbits appear to be coming closer to us. When the planet is moving away from us, it also makes the star look more distant. Scientists can use this information to figure out what the planet is doing and how big it is. And that's how they found Wolfie. This exoplanet is estimated to be the Earth's size and about one and a third times the mass of our planet. It's orbiting a red dwarf star who I'll call Wolfie's mama. But here's the real kicker. Wolfie orbits within its star's habitable zone which means it's a prime candidate for liquid water to exist on its surface. That's like hitting the exoplanetary jackpot. Ooh, wish I had a ticket. The study estimates that if Wolfie does have an Earth-like atmosphere, temperatures could rise as high as 55 degrees Fahrenheit, which would mean liquid water could pool on the planet's day side. But here's the catch. The exoplanet is tidally locked to its star, meaning that the same side always faces the star. Just imagine, one side of the planet is always basked in the warmth of its star, while the other is in eternal darkness. Like middle school. <laughs> Just kidding. The team behind the discovery believes it's a prime candidate for further studies. But we'll probably have to wait another 10 years for answers. Until then, we'll just have to keep searching the skies with our telescopes and crossed fingers. Our next planet is TOI 700e. Hmm, what's a good nickname? NASA has just discovered a new planet that's set to take the galaxies by storm, or shall we say by orbit. I'll nickname it Toys Were Us. It's almost the size of Earth, most likely has liquid water on its surface, and it's only 100 light years away. We're not talking about a road trip, of course, but this is close enough in the grand scheme of things. Toys Were Us is the fourth planet in its system, and it's got a bit of a short orbit just 28 days to circle its star. Well, at least you would have a birthday every month. <laughs> Hooray! This time, the discovery was made using the transit method. Planets themselves are incredibly small and hard to detect. But when a planet is in front of its star, it blocks some of the light coming from it, making it look a little bit dimmer. As soon as the planet moves away, the star gets brighter again. So, to find the planet, scientists watch very carefully to see if the star's brightness changes. If it does, that means there's probably a planet playing hide-and-seek with us. And that's how they discovered Toys Were Us. The test mission discovered it. It discovered 66 new exoplanets and 2,100 more candidates waiting to be confirmed. TESS has been very busy creating imaging for 75% of the sky. Talk about efficiency! Toys Were Us is located in the optimistic habitable zone, between planets C and D, but it may be tidally locked, just like Wolfie, so we might have to settle for a one-sided water world. The discovery of Toys Were Us is a promising prospect for future follow-up observations, and it demonstrates the potential for TESS to find even smaller exoplanets in the future. Who knows? It may find a new home for humanity among the stars one day. 
or at least a new vacation spot. Next, we have twins GJ1002b and GJ1002c. The galaxy just got a little bit closer to us with the discovery of two exoplanets, which I'll nickname Hansel and Gretel, that are just a stone's throw away from our solar system. That's right, these two Earth-like planets are located less than 16 light-years away, which is just a hop, skip, and a jump in space terms. For comparison, Proxima Centauri b is the closest Earth-mass exoplanet at 4.2 light-years away. So, these two new neighbors are among the closest to us. They both orbit a red dwarf star with barely one-eighth the mass of the Sun. It's quite cool and faint, but that's okay, since both planets are very close to it. Hansel takes 10 days to orbit its star, while Gretel takes just over 21 days. Even more birthdays, I guess. The discovery was made by an international scientific team and was no small feat. The team had to work together with two instruments, Espresso and Carminis. The result? A cafe latte. Nah. What they got were measurements so accurate, you could practically count the number of craters on the planet's surfaces. The big deal is, the planets are located in the habitable zone of their star and are just the right size, making them excellent candidates for future atmospheric studies. The lead author says, Nature seems bent on showing us that Earth-like planets are very common. With these two, we now know seven in planetary systems quite near to the Sun. Who knew our neighbors could be so friendly? In conclusion, the discovery of Hansel and Gretel is a giant leap for humankind. So let's all raise a glass of H2O, or whatever they drink on exoplanets, and celebrate it! The last planet on our list is LP890-9C, which I'll call Bob. This super-Earth, located about 98 light-years away, is roughly 40% larger than our home planet. Moreover, it has a twin, which I'll nickname Ray, which is up to 75% larger than Earth. More space is always good, right? The two planets orbit around the red dwarf star. Unfortunately, Ray is quite hot to the touch, with an estimated temperature of 253 degrees Fahrenheit, so don't touch. Its sibling, Bob, is located in the habitable zone of its star, making it a prime candidate for the potential of life. But let's remember that the actual temperature of the planets depends on their atmospheres. It's possible that Bob, being the outermost planet, has a runaway greenhouse effect, making it more like Venus than Earth. So it might be too hot to be habitable at all. But let's not lose hope yet. The James Webb Space Telescope, launched in December 2021, is on the case. With its cutting-edge technology and powerful instruments, including spectrographs, it can peer into the atmospheres of exoplanets and reveal which ones might be habitable. So let's see what it discovers. This planet has been listed as the second most favorable habitable zone terrestrial planet. Now it's on the list with seven other Earth-like planets, all about 40 light-years away from us. Maybe they'll become our new homes in the future. Maybe we should fix the home we have. But until then, enjoy this moment and celebrate all of these new discoveries. Who knows how many more planets we'll find in the future, considering how much technology develops each year. Thousands? Millions? Hello there! Thank you for coming to the Space Job Agency. We have a whole bunch of departments. Intergalactic jobs, keep it in Milky Way, our solar system rocks, or gases, <laughs> and many smaller ones. Tired of a 9 to 5 routine on our planet? No problem. Let's see if you have any qualifications for newly opened positions. So, we've got here… Oh! An asteroid miner on Mars. As you know, asteroids are some sort of leftovers from times when our solar system was forming. Our scientists believe it's debris left of planet collisions and destruction. Tens of thousands of asteroids are circling our Sun, and most of them are between the orbits of Jupiter and Mars. That way, Mars is a perfect location for this job. Those asteroids can hide a lot inside. They're made of magnesium, iron, nickel. We believe some of them consist of oxygen, gold, water, and platinum. We need those for our industries. We have a station with food and everything else you'll need up there. So, you're in a specially designed spacecraft. You start from Mars, land on an asteroid, and start mining. Our machinery is lightweight and solar-powered. 
which means you need less fuel. Sometimes we send robots to do this, sometimes people. Robots don't need food or other supplies. On the other hand, they're not so precise as humans. You use similar techniques as miners on the Earth. Basically, you'll need to scrape the material off the asteroid. The majority of the ore will probably fly off, so you'll have to use a big canopy to collect it. Since the gravity on asteroids is so much weaker than on Earth, you'll have to learn how to use grapples to anchor yourself to the surface. That way, you can move around with little effort. Once you're done with one asteroid and the material is sent to Earth, you're going to the next one. Are you good at sports? I can see there is an ad for a ski instructor on Mars. Mars has four seasons, just like Earth. And winter there lasts around six Earth months because the year there is almost twice as long. The snow there is different because it's made of frozen carbon dioxide instead of frozen water. But don't worry, the best scientists made it completely safe. Snowball fights are not so fun. You get a poor pack of frozen carbon dioxide and a bit of water ice. But snowboarding, sledding, and skiing there are so cool. No, literally, the surface is almost frozen. The snow is not as thick as on our planet, but the surface is very slippery, so it's fun. So, you're gonna work there for six months, but if you plan to make some extra cash, we're transferring you to Europa, one of Jupiter's moons. Europa is very cold. Its surface is mostly composed of solid water ice, a subsurface ocean we didn't get to see yet. But, hey, our team of space divers is going there in three months. I'll check if there's a position open if you're interested. They say this ocean might have twice as much water as we have on Earth. Plus, our team of scientists still think this is one of the best spots to build Earth-like cities in our solar system. But until then, you can go as a skiing instructor. The surface is made of ice, so we created our own snow to go skiing. You'll like it there. There are many hills and domes on Europa. Some ridges are 5.5 miles across. So if you want some adrenaline, Europa has little to no atmosphere, so your suit protects you from radiation from the sun. Okay, the next one is a driver in a space taxi on Venus. Tourists love going there, despite that it's very, very hot. It's further away from our sun than Mercury, but it's still hotter. The thing is, the atmosphere there is like a blanket that traps the heat. The planet is scorching, so you can't stay there for too long. The company will provide you with a flying car that looks like a mini spaceship. You'll have to be a pretty good driver because the atmosphere is very dense. And it's also quite windy there. The speed often goes over 220 miles per hour. And it can get tricky with the clouds. You won't be able to see because the wind's moving them all the time, so you have to act fast. Plus, Venus is the planet with the most volcanoes in our solar system. Much of its surface is covered with volcanic deposits, making it hard to land and find a safe spot to land. If you accept this job, here's a tip. It's better to stay in the air. The view is amazing. Speaking of volcanoes, you can probably join our team of space volcanologists. As an assistant first, of course, but later, we'll see if you can take a better position in an intergalactic team. For now, you can stay in our solar system. We presume Mars, Venus, Pluto, and Jupiter's moon Europa have active volcanoes, but there's still no proof of that. The spots we know about for sure are moons Io, Triton, and Enceladus. Moon Finder. We have a department that's looking for new moons, even outside our galaxy. There's also another one where you get to visit and explore moons in our solar system. It has more than 200 moons, so you certainly won't get bored. If we're talking about a planet where you can't even land, like gas giants Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, and Jupiter, you'll visit their moons directly. All major planets have moons, except for Mercury and Venus. You'll have to visit these planets first and try to find their moon. Moons are awesome. For example, Dactyl is a moon that doesn't orbit a planet, but an asteroid. Before this, we didn't even know asteroids could have their moons. Hyperion orbits Saturn. It has an irregular shape, and we believe 
it's probably a part of a much bigger, ancient moon that got destroyed from a collision in the early stage of our solar system. It has a low level of density, almost half that of water. And what about Callisto, the oldest one? It orbits Jupiter, and its craters are 4 billion years old. Callisto helped us understand so much about our solar system. Space Jeweler <laughs> If you want to leave our solar system, you can visit what we call Diamond Planet. It's 41 light years away from Earth, located in the Cancer constellation. It's twice as big and dense as Earth, but almost eight times more massive. Its parent star contains way more carbon than our Sun, and this planet probably contains carbon too. The pressure and the temperature are huge, but we have a unique technology to deal with that. It's covered with diamonds, so your job is to collect it and make some amazing space jewelry. You can visit more interesting planets as a space jeweler, like one where it rains rubies and sapphires. The storms there are pretty crazy, but you only get to collect gems scattered across the planet after it's over. If you're more into making something out of glass, there's literally a planet where it rains glass. It's located 63 light years away from us. It's a little bigger than Jupiter, and you'll be amazed by the planet's atmosphere. It has a stunning azure color because it's mostly made of silicate. The wind there is crazy. It hits 5,400 miles per hour. For comparison, the fastest one we've experienced on Earth was 254 miles per hour. Oh, and the last one, Explorer, on the mission called mm -hmm. Planet 9. Beyond Neptune, you'll see many small worlds peacefully dancing in harmony, and the stubborn one that's still hiding, the Planet 9. We've been looking at it for a very long time. Our scientists think it exists because they noticed gravitational force affecting a small group of objects with clustered orbits. Planet 9 probably orbits our Sun in 7,400 years. It's six times as massive as Earth. It's either a gas giant or some sort of mini-Neptune, or even a rocky super-Earth. It's well paid, but I must warn you, it's a mission of your lifetime. We don't know when you'll be able to go back, it's far away. Neptune is the starting point of our investigation. It's a gas world, so you can't land on it. So you'll have to go to one of its moons called Triton. It's made of nitrogen ice and rock. You'll be fine. Just watch out for geysers there. They erupt on the crust, and then the atmosphere blows them away. And we're still not sure how dangerous they are. And you'll have to wear a special suit, because that's the coldest space object in our solar system we know about. So, are you accepting any of the offers? Get your closet ready! We're moving to Mercury! Your mission is to find out what you need to wear there to feel comfortable. So, Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun in our solar system. It's pretty hot here, about 800 degrees Fahrenheit twice as much as your kitchen oven can produce. You need a heat reflective suit like this. It looks like foil for duck roasting. The shiny, almost mirror-like surface reflects the heat rays and keeps everything inside from getting baked. That's you. This suit is designed to get to the hearts of volcanoes on Earth and can withstand up to 1,470 degrees Fahrenheit. That's twice as much as at the equator of Mercury. Oh, and bring an oxygen tank. Otherwise, you won't be able to breathe there. And you need to strap some heavy dumbbells to your legs. Mercury is smaller than Earth, and gravity is almost three times weaker here. So you have to increase your weight almost three times to feel comfortable. It gets extremely cold there at night, so you need to stuff your thermal suit with insulation. But even that won't save you from the cold. It's three times colder than at the North Pole. Plus, Mercury's atmosphere doesn't protect you from solar radiation as well as Earth's. So, you need to wear thick lead plates under your suit for protection. But the best thing to do is just evacuate from this planet. The next one is Venus. Although it's called Earth's twin sister, the scenery here looks frightening. A hot desert with volcanoes and clouds so dense that you can barely see the sun. These clouds contribute to the greenhouse effect. So, Venus is the hottest planet in the solar system, 890 degrees Fahrenheit. 
but the usual heat reflective suit won't help you this time. The atmospheric pressure here is 92 times higher than on the surface of the Earth. That's like diving 3,200 feet underwater. So the air on Venus will just crush you. To survive, you need an airtight suit made of titanium or other sturdy materials. On Earth, we use an atmospheric diving suit like this to withstand the intense pressure underwater. It's like a mini submarine in the shape of a human body, and it's already equipped with an oxygen tank. Yes, the air on Venus is not only unbreathable, it's also toxic. The next planet is Earth. Just look out the window and decide for yourself what to wear today, okay? Let's go to Earth's satellite, the Moon. A few people have been here already, and they were wearing pretty big spacesuits. The main thing is to bring an oxygen tank. It's contained in a backpack along with the life support system. Even though it's cold, there's no atmosphere. It's almost a vacuum, and there's no air particles to take heat from your body, so you won't freeze instantly. Your suit itself should be airtight and keep the atmospheric pressure inside. The lower the pressure, the lower the temperature the fluid can boil over. In space, fluids from your body can evaporate in seconds. You don't want that, so you should wear a spacesuit. It'll also save you from dangerous solar radiation. The moon is defenseless against it. And the gravity here is six times weaker than on Earth. So you can jump six times higher and lift six times more weight. It makes sense to take a little weight with you, so you don't feel as clumsy as the first astronauts. Next up, Mars. In summer, you could walk around here in shorts and a t-shirt. The highest recorded temperature here is about 95 degrees Fahrenheit. In colder times, you'd have to wear a sweater and a warm jacket here, maybe even two. The average temperature here is slightly colder than the coldest point on Earth. But the atmospheric pressure here is frustrating. It's 170 times less than we're used to. Take the altitude at which commercial airplanes fly on Earth. Multiply it by three. The conditions there are very similar to those on Mars. It's cold and there's no oxygen to breathe. Without a spacesuit, you'd last two minutes at most on Mars. So you need an airtight spacesuit on you all the time on the surface of Mars. NASA scientists are preparing a new generation of spacesuits that will allow astronauts to climb, crawl, and bend without difficulty. You'd feel like a real athlete on the surface of Mars. The gravity there is three times weaker than on Earth, so you could easily lift an animal the size of a tiger there. Don't forget to put a spacesuit on it, of course. Now let's fly through the asteroid belt further into space and arrive at Jupiter. It's the largest planet in our solar system, and it's a gas giant. That means there's no solid surface, so you can't even stand there. Although, hypothetically, you could jump into Jupiter. Then you'd keep falling all the way to the planet's core. Suppose you're standing on a platform just above the surface of the planet. The first thing you feel is the force of gravity. It's 2.5 times stronger here. You feel it pulling you down, and you can barely even jump up. So it would be nice to equip your spacesuit with an exoskeleton to support your body and help you move. Plus, it's incredibly cold. You'll feel the cold at about negative 229 degrees Fahrenheit on the surface of the clouds of the gas giant. And what makes things worse is the constant wind. It can reach speeds of up to 900 miles per hour, almost twice as fast as the speed of commercial airplanes on Earth. That kind of cold wind will instantly draw heat away from your body, so your spacesuit must be really thick and warm. But the pressure at the top of these clouds is almost the same as on Earth. Technically, you could even take off your helmet here if it weren't for the lack of oxygen and severe cold. Maybe Saturn promises better conditions. Another gas giant. The gravitational force here is almost the same as on Earth, so nothing will constrain your movements except for a massive spacesuit. It's even colder here than on Jupiter, and the pressure here is about the same as about 15 feet underwater on Earth. So, the spacesuit not only lets you breathe and stay warm, but keeps your eardrums intact. Hey, hold on tight! You just almost got blown away by a gust of wind over 1,100 miles per hour. That's not unusual on Saturn. That kind of wind on Earth could get you from one coast of the United States to another in just two and a half hours. 
The only option to warm up here is to jump down to the center of the planet. The closer you get to the core, the warmer it gets. But the pressure rises at a tremendous rate. In just a few seconds of freefall, even the toughest titanium suit will be crushed. Let's finally step onto a solid surface, Titan, Saturn's moon. It's 1.5 times the size of our moon and 80% heavier. And its surface is mostly composed of water, ice, and rock. The pressure here is a little bit higher than on Earth. You wouldn't feel any discomfort if it weren't extremely cold. Titan is 9.5 times further from the Sun than Earth, so our star can barely warm this moon. The air here is mostly nitrogen, just like on Earth. But oxygen is completely absent here, so it's impossible to breathe without a spacesuit. There may be a huge ocean beneath Titan's surface. Saturn's gravity heats up this moon's core enough to make the ice melt. Plus, it must be extremely salty, which means it can remain liquid even at very low temperatures. The next two planets are Uranus and Neptune. So Uranus holds the record for the coldest planet in our solar system. The temperature here is about negative 224 degrees Celsius, so bring the warmest spacesuit you have. They say if you jump to the center of Uranus, at one point the pressure becomes so high that it turns hydrogen into a crust of ice. And if you get even lower, you can see the rocky core. Neptune, in turn, holds the record for the strongest winds in the solar system. It's an ice giant, just like Uranus. So the dress code here is the usual. A super warm spacesuit, a tank of oxygen, and a heating system. So far, we don't have the kind of spacesuit that would help you survive on any of the gas giants. But if you get to the core of Neptune, it gets too hot. Its temperature is almost the same as on the surface of the Sun.